Hey everybody, it's been a little while, sorry about that. I've been super duper busy with my day job, doing music related work and also getting this studio finally finished. Uh, so that's what I wanted to just show you a bit today is the improvements and things I've made uh, as time's gone on. I finally got the budget to put some glass and a door in, <laughs> which is kind of essential, and also done some acoustic treatment. So just as a quick recap, here's what it looked like before I started lining it all out. And here is more or less the same angle as to what it looks like now. And that's all been finished. So it's a huge difference. There's lots of work gone into this. So was it worth all the effort? Absolutely. I've got this lovely space now that's nice and warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Although I do wish we'd put a little bit more insulation in the ceiling because it does get quite warm in here. We've had record temperatures here recently and the room is just unbearable. But then so was the upstairs of my house. So I think maybe it's on par with where my old studio used to be. With regards to the noise coming in and out of the studio, it's been a great success, so let's have a look at that. So just a quick demo of how well the double wall system works, so sound insulation. I'm outside the cabin here, I've got one of my noisiest jams playing in there. You should be able to hear just a bit of background noise from the sort of suburban area where I live. So it's, it's turned up really loud in there, so let's just go see the difference. And that is a massive difference too. So there's no background noise in here at all. So that's fantastic. So let's have a look around and see what's new. Um, probably most importantly, I've got acoustic treatment on the walls now. I've got a big acoustic cloud above my desk that helps diffusion from reflection from the ceiling. I've got uh, two pieces of acoustic treatment behind the speakers. And I've got one either side uh, to get, catch the reflections there. Um, there's a good method where you basically sit at your listening position, which would be the chair, and then you place a mirror on the walls where you think you might catch a reflection of, the, of a speaker. And if you can see it, that's where you need to put acoustic treatment. Uh, there's a pretty strange video I found that explains the process. I'll try to remember to link to below, uh, but that's basically it. So I did the same thing on the ceiling and that cancelled out a really nasty resonant peak I had when I first moved in here that made it sound awful. So these are all handmade. I made them uh, with bits of waste wood. Uh, the same two inch rock wall um, that I put on the walls and then the fabric is actually an under felt that's designed to be used on roofs. It, was, it just happened to be a roll in the attic when I first moved in and it was just enough. Um, I decided to go with something nice and bright just to keep the room bright, whereas a lot of acoustic panels are actually black. There's a commercially available one there that someone gave me that I've used to cover that section of the wall. Obviously that's a kind of very, very dark and would make the room very dark if I put that much black acoustic treatment up. So these are the same, but they're double thickness with an air gap above and they're hung on what are called turnbuckles. Again, there's a really good video on how to mount these and how to make them. There's also a really great video uh, that can be used to help you calculate the best way uh, to mount these, to cancel out certain frequencies because the air gap itself is actually as important as the thickness of the panel. So another big change is the fact that I've now got uh, secondary glazing in. So the outer window is single glazing, which you can see is the bit with this black bar on the sash. And this is a new piece of glass on the inside. So I've got these extra frames that I made up, put some double glazing in it, and these can be opened if need be. So that is a complete glazing unit and an air cavity, and then the existing glass. So that gives us much better uh, acoustic treatment to stop the sound from leaking quite so much. And then I've got the same on this side, which is more or less exactly the same. So a bit of light in here means we can have plants. The extra space has also enabled me to set up more lighting so I can absolutely drench things in light when it comes to filming on the desk over here. 
So another big difference, as boring as it is, is having an actual door in this opening that enables me to shut out even more of the background noise and also hide the very untidy utility area, which has now got this set of shelves in. CDRs, a mini disc, and a quite large collection of blank tapes, and a quite large collection of pre-recorded tapes for taking samples and things off. Something else I also mentioned in a previous video was using an expander on my um, Focusrite. So I've got this Behringer ADA 8200 here, which gives me eight extra channel inputs, which I've just kind of screwed down in a kind of slightly budgy way because I don't want to have to put an extra rack in here. So there's a light pipe comes out the back here and that is run all the way around in a piece of trunking. It's all the way around, all the way around to the back of that audio interface there. So it just gives us eight ins. We don't get any more outputs. So all my outputs have to come from here. Uh, which is why I've decided to leave my rack units on this side so I can run audios in and out this way. I've had a bit of a sort out furniture wise too, moved a few things around and this just makes it a lot easier to organize all my stuff. It's just got power supplies and cables and mics and stuff all in these and gives us this massive great big work area so I can spread my gear out um, and get more gear. Why not? So I think it'd be quite nice to have a Euro rack system on here. It would fit quite nicely. And then obviously I've cleared off this workspace here, sort of just sort of dumped all my soldering gear into one corner so we've got even more space to set equipment up. Uh, the idea being that I can have projects going with equipment wired in for things like the upcoming film soundtrack that I'm working on and then not have to put everything away every time I need to start like a YouTube video for example. So it's just one or two more little things that need sorting out in the studio. I desperately need to upgrade my computer system, which I hate doing, but I'm still using an old Dell Windows 7 system and it's really struggling to cope now. Uh, I hate moving all the software over, which is one reason I've put it off for so long, but not only that, but I've spent about a thousand pounds on Vets bills recently, and that's blown my whole budget, so I'll have to wait a little bit longer. Not only that, but we burnt out our best Canon DSLR camera recently, so um, that was the one that I used to use for filming my face, which is why this footage perhaps looks a little bit grainier than what I would prefer. That was my wife's camera so uh, I'm going to save up and get something a bit better. Hopefully to shoot stuff in 4k maybe even the tutorials and that sort of thing. So yeah we'll just have to see how long it takes me to save up for all that stuff. Uh, but that's about it really. Uh, not much else to say other than I will try to find more time to shoot more tutorial videos and extra content in the future. Hopefully I will get a bit more time at the weekends now. This place is finally done. So thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe and leave comments and all that sort of stuff. Thanks very much. Cheers.